Every class was given an assignment about what to bring in beforehand. As a matter of fact, for several weeks before, they, the classes were collecting on their own. And the idea was that, you know, they bring these objects in. And the object was, was I walk in the door and see what we've got, and we use what we've got. And in the case of the one children who they were stomping, that particular class brought in all of these pallets, you know, these wooden pallets that shipping, that the forklifts used to, to carry goods on. And they, they, they brought in four or five of these. And, you know, and I walked in the room, and I saw all these pallets in this room, and I'm going, uh-oh, what are we going to do with this, you know? And then it started dawning on me that, well, hey, those things make a great noise when you step on them, you know? And so we started working with that, and we started working on the whole coordination idea and started doing exercises in coordination. But yeah, we, the idea is use what they brought in, the idea of taking uh, what you've got and making something out of it. Being with six different classes in the course of a day, things come up, like for example, the one class that was working with metal. We talked a lot about the fact that, you know, if you're going to hold an object and make music with it, you want it to ring most of the time. And if you want it to ring, it means you need to hold it in a spot where it's not ringing, where there's no vibration, which is called a nodal point. And so we experimented, and I showed them how to find the nodal point, you know, on a rod and that. And so, and we did that with a number of classes. And so that really kind of gets into physics. And um, so it really kind of covers the gamut. Can you strike a wooden object with a metal object? And we learned that, no, you can't do that because you'll tear it apart. <laughs> because it's the metal is just heavier and more dense than the wood and it just eats it away and so we talked about those kinds of concepts for, for them to start to understand um, and for a lot of them it's the first time they ever thought about a concept of that so it really has applications out in life but the idea is to really start thinking about how when you're producing a sound or when you're striking something it's not just about what the object is but what you're striking it with I learned some new rhythms with the jump man. He taught us a bunch of new rhythms and how to make um, music out of stuff that people don't want. I learned how to um, make something that nobody wants uh, and use it as something that you like. And uh, if nobody wants something, then uh, you can make something out of it. And I learned new rhythms. I do believe that, that a lot of these kids are, are right now already being affected by this. I see kids in the classes that often are intimidated by, you know, an average or a, a real music instrument per se, uh, just come to life and really come out of their shell with these junk instruments, you know, something that they find in their garbage and here they are making it into music and it's just incredible to watch some of these kids that will shy away in class from from a wonderful well-made quality musical instrument but then they get a piece of junk in their hands and this it's it's magic it's really cool I'm really hoping that the kids walk away with two different things. One, uh, a real love of playing music, because you know, a lot of times, especially at the elementary level, when they're first learning to play an instrument, it's a long time before they can start to think about putting their heart in something, because they're interested, they're, they're having a hard time finding where C is, and where D is, or how to hold the stick, and all that. But when I work with them, we, we don't worry about any of that. We just worry about trying to get their heart into it. And if I can get their heart into it, then they know what it's really like to play music, you know. And, and once they've got that, then they can go and pick up the sticks and all that. So I'm really trying to reinforce what the music teachers do here, but I'm doing it, I'm kind of coming from a different angle. That's the first thing. The second thing is to really try to develop an awareness in kids of how recycling and reuse and how being a good environmental citizen really doesn't just apply to recycling, it applies to everything in life. And if it can apply to music, well, it can apply to just about anything in life. So the idea is to really give them uh, a foundation for thinking about reuse in a different way and about how to reuse things and how to um, 
um, basically not just discard everything, but to ask certain questions. And we talk about a lot of that, and that's really intertwined within, with the music. So I'm really kind of approaching it from two angles. When I'm doing something with an orchestra or with professional musicians, it's really the idea is to really develop a way of communicating with the audience. It's really about musicians working together and playing for the audience and trying to present the audience with, um, with whatever the musical ideas happen to be of the composer. Whereas when you're working in a school or you're working in a community situation, the idea is really to try to work with the members of the community or the children in the school to get them excited about the basics of music and especially if you're playing in a group of people um, once a group of people starts playing a rhythm the power starts to become very um, dominant and very quickly people who are non-musicians all of a sudden get in a group environment like this and the energy goes up and they start to understand how powerful music can really be if you're a part of it because they're getting it inside it and that gets them excited and that gets them excited about music and gets them excited about being a part of making music and you don't have to be a virtuoso to enjoy that it's something that you know it's real simple and whereas professionals are really playing for somebody to listen the chains were great. The chains, chains were just yeah. a second. Chains That's when the trombones yeah. come in. It was right after that. Do you want to do right after the chains? Yeah, sure. One of the things that I think is really important about what I do is, um, is a statement that the artist Marcel Duchamp made, and also he made it to my teacher, John Cage, and, um, and it, was the back, it was the basis of a lot of Cage's work, and it really has become the basis of my work, too, and that is, um, he said, tools that are no good require more skill. And I think that that has become my mantra, so to speak. Um, the idea of taking junk, the idea of taking these objects that basically pretty much all sane people agree have no value and finding a different value for it, and then being able to integrate it into a symphony orchestra situation, um, that's where the skill level is for me, and that's where the art is for me. Um, is to be able to take something like that and to create something that um, can be accepted or hopefully accepted.